I used to think that Super Mario was special. He could break bricks, run for hours, wall jump, and even defeat dragons with his bare hands. Hello. But then, on my way to the post office, I met an Italian guy, and it turns out they could all do that. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from the world's most popular plumber, but have you seen World 1-1? I'm pretty sure we could beat that level with our physical bodies. On the exact opposite end of the spectrum, Sonic the Hedgehog is supposed to be one of the most lightning-fast, agile, and movement-based characters ever made. But that's not the case. I've actually played the most recent in Sonic games, or at least I or at least I think I have, but there were so many QTEs and auto-scrolling sections that my hands just fell asleep. I could still barely feel this one. Sure, the games looked cool, but in the moments that Sonic wasn't being blasted through his 9,000th loop in a row, he kind of fell. <sighs> now this got my gears grinding away. Sonic is supposed to be very agile and capable of extreme feats. What, why is that on screen? Meme. Sonic with his feet out, and it's just his feet, it's gross. Okay. Show his feet. Just show Sonic's bare feet. But is he nothing without the world blasting him in random directions? Mario is supposed to be as talented as the common Italian man, but his worlds are very easy to traverse. Could he even survive in a world as complicated as Sonic's? Look, I'm not Mr. Beast. I can't afford to build an IRL World 1-1 with genetically modified dogs that look like Goombas. I also can't make a gigantic metal park with boost shooting people in random directions because I'm like 80% sure that's illegal. Hey Siri, huh? is that illegal? What the hell, hell, of course it's illegal, you stupid ch So instead, we'll be doing things a bit differently. Through the wonderful powers of video game modding, yeah. we'll see just how crazy these crossovers can be. By pulling a Freaky Friday and making Mario and Sonic switch places. Except they'll also take their bodies as well, so it won't really be like Freaky Friday. Now, trying to beat a Sonic game as Super Mario may sound like it's a bad idea. A lot like how a duck sounds like a duck and a MOBA sounds like a dead genre. That's because it is. But I played League of Legends somewhat professionally for over seven years, so I'm not gonna let a few bugs scare me away. I'm sure with enough willpower and trial and error, we can persevere. It's like my great grand grand used to say, do not be afraid of doing what takes time. The time will pass anyway. Also, please subscribe to the channel. She said that. After snatching Mario out of Peach's castle with my bare hands, it was finally time to get started on the quest and... Okay. This somehow looks better than I thought it would. Now, before anyone says, hey, Scooch, that's just Sonic dressed up as Super Mario. That doesn't count. I assure you, it's not. This is full-blown Super Mario 64 Mario. He can long jump, he can air dive, he can backwards jump, and most importantly, he's not able to abuse all of Sonic's boosters because they only launch his tiny feetsies about six feet. He also comes with two two bonus buttons that he didn't have before. One of them is to equip his famous wing cap, which will be necessary to traverse some sections. And the other button we'll talk about when the time is right. Now, if that's not odd enough, there's also one more thing that I personally really enjoy. If Mario ever gets launched just a bit too high, he takes fall damage. I mean, it doesn't really hurt him, but it completely kills your momentum and any hope you had of doing something Cool. I just thought that was hilarious. We start Green Hill Zone and I am just beaming with joy. Not only does Mario feel exactly like well, Mario, but the idea of being able to play him in the Sonic universe made my inner gamer squee with joy. That is, until we hit our first obstacle, a tiny little cave that Sonic normally just spins through. But since Italian people can't naturally turn into a ball, we have to awkwardly crawl through it. This is awful. This is not good. This is, this is the worst. 
After a little bit more traversing, we hit a red spring, but our excitement is immediately burned when Mario's knees just give out. Shortly after, we hit a bit of a platforming section, which actually feels good. Who would have thunk it? Mario feels good on platforming sections. Someone should write this down. But just as things were going smoothly, we hit a very anti-Italian obstacle. This spiral track, which requires more speed than our tiny feet can muster. Fortunately, it wasn't really necessary, so I kind of just jumped off of it and landed on the track below. But but then we hit this section right here. Not only was there a loop that I couldn't get enough speed to climb, but the hill going backwards was also unclimbable, putting me right in between the fourth and fifth layers of Dante's Inferno. After struggling for a solid minute and a half, I remembered that this instance of Super Mario came with a secret technique, one of the bonus buttons from earlier. If you hold a trigger button, Mario can break out of 2D space. Face, meaning I could theoretically just walk to the other side of the loop and keep going. Unfortunately though, the game wasn't meant to be played like this, so there were a lot of bugs with it. Like a lot. I decided to take another route because this was getting kind of annoying, but the only other path had another crawling section, so it's give and take. Excited to see something new, we get through it, hop, skip, and immediately arrive back at the Gosh. loop. I spent more time at this loop than I'd like to admit. So I eventually gave up and just tried to fly through the spiral section from earlier. Yes! I did it, chat! Yes! I did it! In only 10 very short minutes, we managed to get through one third of one half of one fourteenth of the game. All right, everybody, don't clap at once. I know. Yeah, I know. It's impressive. We hit a much larger loop, and knowing that the only way out was through, I tried to break out of 2D space to clear it. And quite literally, the worst thing that could happen happens. I somehow managed to get sucked into a wall. Please! Any fate but this! Now, this may not seem like it's a big deal, but after jumping around for the next three minutes, I realized that this wall was airtight, meaning there was absolutely no way to escape, except for the dreaded start over button, which sent me back to the beginning of the level. The fall damage aspect just kills me every time. Like it's, like it's just so unfortunate. <laughs> After a few minutes of backtracking, we pass the loop-de-loop -loop for the first time and meet what I'd like to call this stage's final boss. A spiral track just like before, except the funny thing about this one is if you don't make it over, you die. <laughs> and when you die, you have to spend three entire minutes making your way back. You can just hear the excitement in my voice. Stop! What is he f Every single time I die. I wish I could say I figured it out quickly, but I didn't. And I even got myself stuck in the f***ing wall again. But at least this one had a hole in it, so I was able to Sudoku pretty fast. A few deaths later, I was almost ready to call it quits. But then, finally, this happened. Bro, please, Mario. Please, Mario! My God, dude. And with that, we were done with our first stage. Oh, I'm sorry. First half of a stage. Hooray. Now, if you don't know Sonic Generations, this next part may be a little confusing. So let me explain. Basically, the second acts of every level are supposed to be the new Sonic stages, meaning they have 3D sections and normally rely on the boost mechanic to get you to the end. But Mario doesn't have a boost mechanic, so you just just gotta walk. <laughs> it's a boost stage, but I run the normal speed of an Italian. The good news, however, is that the stage was really easy. Because as we all know, 3D Sonic games are more of a movie than anything else. Ooh, a little bit of speed, and then instantly it gets ruined by Mario just not being able to... Oh, there's a little grind section where Mario gets chased by a gigantic fish, but this imagery is just so wrong. It's the most wish.com gaming I have ever seen. Is that a wallpaper? Whoa! Oh. <laughs> That's the fuck. 
We run to these little sections where I'm supposed to do a cool ass Sonic slide kick, but since I'm Mario, I just crawl through and it kills the vibe. Here's when I kind of realized something that I never really got a chance to notice in Sonic games. Sure, the levels may look nice when you're playing Sonic, but it definitely gives me the feeling of rushed homework. It deserves a passing grade if you don't stare at it for too long. But once you move at a human pace, you really start to notice how random it all is. The best example I have is it somewhat feels AI generated. It's like right here. This is ugly as shit. There's very clearly no thought process behind that background. Just random trees and then random stuff just sticking out. And it's because all Sonic levels are so big that it's impossible for them to make everything look good. Like, oh look, some more trees. Oh look, another totem. Like an algorithm was told what Green Hill Zone is supposed to look like and it just threw up its own image. And finally, we beat our first stage. Surely it wasn't going to get harder. Right? Our second stage was another Sonic classic. Chemical Plant, AKA the level that originally taught me the meaning of anxiety. As a man who almost drowned in real life, I can honestly say with my whole chest that drowning in Sonic is worse. But fortunately, Mario doesn't have those problems. I mean, you could still drown, but he can swim, which means you could just go up for air when you need it? The platforming section on this stage felt kind of good actually. Chemical Plant is a lot tighter than Green Hill Zone, which allows Mario to shine with wall hops and long jumps. Also, sometimes Mario just randomly gets blasted through these tubes and you can just imagine how much that hurts. Poor bastard. The swimming sections were, believe it or not, pretty buggy. I even got hit into a wall and was forced to drown my way out. Dear God, don't tell me. But after that fiasco, it was kind of smooth sailing. Had to get stabbed a few times on a spike pit, but who doesn't? I finally felt like I was getting the hang of this, whatever this was. Act two immediately starts with a reminder that Mario's kind doesn't belong. Now this kind of sounds like it's about race, and it is, because he lacks the ability to. That's clever. I wish I had something interesting to say about this part, but a lot of it was just slowly walking through a massive stage that Sonic would blast through in 0.5 seconds. Most of it sucked, but this part was especially ass because it was a giant hill that there was no way to climb besides slowly walking. Like, what the hell? We're gonna be here for days, man. A few relatively tight jumps later, we awkwardly swim through a shallow area Area and run into the most annoying section of this entire run. A section where the only way to progress is to perfectly wall jump back and forth up a massive chasm. I would go as far as to say that I'm not bad at video games. Heck, I would even say that I'm sometimes good. But even with my layers of expertise, this section took seven minutes for me to do correctly once, which should normally be enough. But shortly after, there's this massive wall that requires Mario to fly around it using the out of bounds button. But if you go just one pixel too low, you die. And you know what that means? I had to do the wall jump again. Then I died and I had to do it again. This time before getting to that massive impassable wall, I noticed a track in the background. So I kind of tried flying there using the wing cap and it was surprisingly easy. So we can move on, I, I guess. guess. We do another wish.com grind section, slide down a ramp that's kind of anticlimactic and then die because the spring doesn't give us enough speed to get over the cliff. We wisely fly over the gap this time and then use the wing cap to clip onto the grinding rail and take us near the end of the stage. This moment felt kind of good because even though this mod worked less than a modern YouTuber, it still showed that Mario can make things work. This level was so torturous that you could just hear how happy I am when I complete the go, stage. Please. Ah, ha, ha. Yes! 
Oh my God. Making my overall runtime on this level 39 minutes and 58 seconds. Yeah, I know. I should leave the speed running to the professionals. I did end up trying to play one more stage shortly after and it was such a pain in the ass. It got a little too creative with the platforming bits and I did end up breaking the stage with the wing cap way too many times. But the biggest problem was the end of the stage. Half the map didn't even load correctly so I had to navigate an invisible level. But then there's this spiral pillar that collapses the second you touch it. This doesn't really matter for Sonic the Hedgehog because he can outrun the collapse, but Mario never stood a chance. I got stuck inside of an invisible wall and almost had to reset my run, but then this happened. Why can't he just, why is there no death button? Mario. Turns out if you press all four triggers at the same time, you die. Could have used that info earlier, but cool, I guess. <laughs> I literally spent another hour flying out of bounds and dying again and again. Until finally, after a full restart, I managed to find a really high point to fly from, which allowed me to skip the spiral pillar altogether and fly directly into a red spring that launches you into the floating flag at the end of the stage. Oh. Here we go. Oh my god. Holy shit. That was so <laughs> hard. Yeah, that really sucked. And at this point I was done. So what did we learn? Mario is a very capable character, but honestly, a lot of his power lies in being able to explore freely at his own pace. When you put him on the roller coaster that is a Sonic game, he becomes a lot worse. But what if we flipped the script? What if we took Sonic, a character that's meant to be on a roller coaster the entire time, and put him in a oh, much my. slower playground? Well... It's not that bad. As far as movement options go, Sonic runs way faster, has a jump bounce instead of a ground pound. When you crouch, he turns into a ball and he has an air dash slash homing attack to generate momentum. The funniest thing about this mod is that the creator also changed the enemies and he made the letter that happens in the beginning of the game come from Eggman. I'll conquer the world. Think you can stop me? <laughs> There is no f way. Because why not? Look at Knuckles just standing there as confused as I am. Now, believe it or not, controlling Sonic in a Mario game was a lot easier. Like a lot. To get the first star, uh, I mean shard, I sprint up bob -omb Battlefield. Sonic can even run up some walls, so it was fairly easy to speed run through this stage. Fighting King bob -omb at the top was about as simple as it always is. In fact, I think I almost struggled a bit more as Sonic because he just needs to chill the f*** out for a second or two. Slow down. After beating King bob -omb, I saw what looked like a pretty makeable jump now that I was Sonic, but then I was harshly reminded that I'm dealing with Mario physics and immediately took fall damage that hurt this time. On my way back up, we run into this complete nightmare fuel of a monster. What the hell is that, dude? What is that? Yuck, I don't remember Eggman having anything like that. Then we grab the shard at the top of the stage and continue on the quest. The next mission was to race Metal Sonic to the top of the mountain. But since I was Sonic, you know, I just like <laughs> ran there. Hooray. Then for our third shard, we freed the evil Pac-Man chain chomp thing and kept going on our way. Our next stage was Cool Cool Mountain because Sonic is chill like that. Unfortunately, the first few shards in this stage had to do with the awkward slide inside the cabin and hitting a little snag on the slide would send Sonic flying right off the stage. Stage. After dying a few times, I finally got to the end and got my shard. Next, I return this Chow back to his mom. Okay, I'm not gonna ask about that. Get my second shard and immediately have to do the slide again. Only this time, I'm going against a giant Chow instead. Wait, is that... 
Is that not the dad of the- I'm not gonna ask. This segment is supposed to be pretty easy, but Sonic's momentum is so out of whack that I died a lot here. On this death, I noticed that Sonic's aerial momentum had the same problem that it always has in 3D games, where it doesn't really transfer your ground momentum and instead shoots you straight up. I've always absolutely hated this, and feeling it on such a precise section was cheeks. I continued to die. What is that? Until this run where I thought I won, but learned that jumping down counts as a shortcut, so I lost again. Then, finally, we beat him, or her, them, and get our final shard of the stage. We run into Womp's Fortress, and this level was so standard that there's not much to talk about. I do a cool little stage skip with Sonic's bounce move and then fight the big thwomp. But in this mod, it's Eggman controlling it, which which is just terrifying. Did he hollow out a sentient creature to do this? What a dick. We defeat the Thwomp, grab the shard, and now we're close to our first Bowser fight. Again, there's not a lot to talk about here because Sonic just guns it up the stage, so here it is fast forwarded. Ta-da! My ADHD brain kind of took over here and I kept collecting shards, but then it was time for the Bowser fight. And now it was time for our only boss fight of this entire video. That's right, the first Bowser fight. The painting was a guy instead of the princess, which is pretty sick. This stage was kind of scary because there was a lack of rails, but I get through it in my first time because I'm the goat and we make it all the way to Bowser. What the f*** is that? What the f***? That is just terrifying, man. After a few very sloppy and tiny throws, we slam Robowznik into a bomb, grab the egg key, and at this point, I can say that I've seen enough. Controlling Sonic inside of a Mario game wasn't that bad. It just felt kind of messy like Sonic always does. Like the feeling of using a game shark and moving way faster than you're supposed to be. But Sonic being in Mario's world was nowhere near as problematic as the inverse. And I think my big brain can explain it. Mario felt bad in a Sonic game because Sonic stages are only meant to be beaten one way. They are a very streamlined, somewhat buggy racetrack that half the time feels more like a movie than a game. Mario's natural, explorative, and free-spirited nature doesn't really thrive in this environment. I don't think anyone does, except for go. Sonic the Hedgehog. And maybe Speedy Gonzalez. Sonic, on the other hand, felt somewhat decent on Mario stages. But nearly every issue I ran into was a problem with Sonic not being able to slow down or just controlling a little poorly because he's so fast. In both of these instances, the problem lied in Sonic's court. He naturally moves way too fast to thrive in an environment that isn't his own. But in order to compensate for his speed addiction, his games have to baby the player and take away the control so that you don't shoot off the screen at 100,000 miles per hour. Mario, on the other hand, is a lot less calculated. If Sonic stages are meant to be the roller coaster, Mario stages are meant to be the playground. And because of that, you can put most characters inside of a Mario stage and get a decent amount of success. To go back to the analogy, sure, a roller coaster is a lot more exhilarating, fun, and exciting the first time around, but one time when I was a kid, I skipped school to go to Six Flags and I rode Riddler's Revenge 10 times in a row, only to immediately blow chunks. Playgrounds, on the other hand, are fun forever. I mean, as a grown-up, you probably shouldn't hang out at one. I don't think I gotta explain that. But in a playground, you're free to do whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want. And I think that's why so many people look back at Mario games so fondly, because they allow the player to play. So can Mario and Sonic survive in each other's world? Yeah. Should they? Probably not. I hope you enjoyed this experiment, and I kind of have a question that I wanted to ask you. What is your favorite insanely fast-paced game? I don't think Sonic is dead in the water, and a lot of his newer games are still fun, but do you know any other speed games that just feel amazing to play? Let me know in the comment section below so that I can go check them out. Here's a video on the second channel if you want 
want to see more of this mess. And here's a playlist on my main channel if you enjoy this style of content. I finally got a cable long enough to use a better mic and I think this video should sound really good. Maybe you'll subscribe too. Who knows? I'm not a psychic. But hey, I could ask one. Hey, psychic, will the viewers subscribe to this channel? Yes, I think they will subscribe. This joke may be offensive. Awesome, we're done. <laughs>